Hi, this is Bob from Hobby Concepts, and today I've got this beautiful little LESU trailer that's designed to tow um, skid steers. And it's a kit. Uh, we're going to build it. Uh, really, really nice. All metal, beautiful looking, uh, fun to build. It's part of a series I'll be doing throughout the year because I do have the LESU hydraulic skid steer kit that I'm going to be building and I have a custom truck to tow it that I'll be building which is going to be a custom Tamiya truck. If you stick around to the very end I'll show you a little quickie preview of that. But anyway, today it's all about the trailer. Let's get started. So here's the deal. I've got this LESU beautiful um, skid steer loader um, kit. Uh, I went with the kit because, well, I love to build things. Uh, this is an amazing kit, all metal, hydraulic, uh, just fantastic, and it will be a future build. But uh, today, um, as I mentioned in the opening, I'm going to build a trailer for it. Let's set this aside over here, and I've got this LESU trailer kit. Now, it's designed specifically for the loader. Uh, nice manual, which is for LESU uh, kind of amazing because <laughs> they are not really good about manuals for things. But uh, the kit looks beautiful as I open it up here. Their packaging is just amazing. Um, all the parts are stuffed into, uh, boy, those are nice foam inserts uh, stuffed into uh, this packing, this kind of foam packing material, and then all the parts are, are you know, bag, nicely bagged, beautifully done, uh, all metal, the whole thing is metal except for the wood decking, and it's beautiful, pull it out here, oh man, and it is heavy, this beautiful metal chassis. Now this, this trailer would carry a ton of weight, um, or will carry a ton of weight. Boy, that's really nice. It's kind of a, kind of a blasted finish, maybe bead blasted, so uh, that should make it easy to paint. Um, I don't know exactly what color we're going to do, but I will come up with something. I was thinking maybe black, but I don't know. Um, I'll uh, play with the instructions a little bit. Uh, diamond plate, holes, really looks good. So, and here's the fenders, um, metal fenders. They're, they're kind of polished steel, stainless steel it looks like, um, with crease lines in them. So I'll probably leave those bare. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to study it for a little bit, and then we'll come back and I'll, uh, I'll think about painting this, and then uh, kind of go from there and we'll do the assembly. So, um, upon further inspection, here's the parts I'm going to paint. I'm going to paint the, uh, the complete chassis. Boy, this thing's heavy. I'm going to paint the two uh, ramps. And these ramps will sit in the back here, and then there's, uh, there's uh, wood inserts that go in, and there's wood inserts that go in here. I'm going to paint these two Nerf bars, which mount up on the front like that. And then I'm going to paint these two brackets that hold the tail lights. So these are all the, basically the bead blasted parts. I decided I'm going to paint them with, uh, uh, to me, a TS-42 light gun metal. There's, uh, this is a walking strip, the diamond plate and the holes that mounts here. I'm going to leave that polished. And I struggled with the fenders, whether I should paint them or not. Um, I'm still struggling with it, but I'm not going to paint them for now. I can always probably paint them later. Uh, I don't know that paint, paint would probably get scratched off of these pretty easy. So I think I'll leave them like they are. And then the, uh, the coupler neck, which mounts up here. Um, boy, this is a nice piece. I, I don't know what to do with it, whether to paint it or not. Um, I'm... Since I don't know what to do, I'm going to probably just leave it unpainted for now. But I'm going to go ahead and paint these parts, and then while I paint them all, 
paint's drying and stuff, I'll start assembling uh, the rest of the trailer. So while I'm uh, waiting for paint to dry, um, I thought I would start building. So um, there's a separate page on the wheel assembly, and it's pretty straightforward. The, uh, the parts are beautiful. Um, I mean, there's just no other way to describe it. The, the, uh, everything's metal. These aluminum wheels are gorgeous. The tires are heavy duty. They have a nice foam insert. Um, these just pop in. And I'm sure this trailer would carry a ton of weight. Although, I don't know that my loader will be all that heavy when it's done. So there's the tire and rim. And then uh, they use these little hex head bolts to hold it together. I mean, beautiful stuff. Very scale. So I have this little tiny nut driver that fits these uh, to drive them in. So what I'm going to do is just line up the hole here in the wheel, drop the trim ring on, put a little tiny bit of Loctite on the bolt, and then drop it in. The first one's always the hardest. Just like that. Grab another bolt. And twist that in now. Uh, when I get down to where all the bolts are in, I just chuck this driver in a in a handle, and you don't want to get them. You don't want to do it too tight, but you just want to snug them up just a little bit. And so then there's the finished product with all the nuts in there. You can see how beautiful that is. So uh, that finish that up, and that'll take care of my tires. Again, while my paint is drying, I've got these wood decks. These are really nicely done. They've got a, a routed area where the, the cross beams go underneath, and they're drilled for the, the screws that hold them down. But um, I like to put some kind of a finish on them. So this is just a horrible chip brush because it doesn't really matter and this is some uh, golden mahogany rust-oleum wood stain so I do I use this on a lot of my trailer decks wood pieces um, it just gives it kind of a nice effect so we'll throw this on here plus it helps protect the wood it soaks in and so water and mud and stuff can can wash off easily later. I just am getting a lot of it on here. You can see I put a piece of cardboard down on my workbench because this stuff just happens to go every place. And my goal here is just to get it everywhere. Let it soak. It's not like painting. This is just getting it on there. Okay. Put on the ends here. All right, so once that's on there, then I take the ubiquitous blue towel 
from Costco and just wipe it off. And I'll do this a couple times before it's all done, uh, wiping it off. I probably won't put any more finish on it. But you can see, of course, the difference in the unfinished piece and the finished piece. Looks a lot nicer and definitely is more weatherproof. All right, so I will go ahead and do the other ones and continue to paint on my trailer. The next thing to build is the tongue jack and uh, this has got a flat spot in it. This has a flat spot on it so it just slides in here like this. There's a pin that drops through the hole so you can adjust the height up and down. And then there's a foot with a pin that mounts through here. Like this. These are really beautiful parts. One thing about LESU is their stuff is really nice. So that drops through there and then there's a E ring that fits on it. Yeah, these E rings are just like the Tamiya ones. Pain in the rear end. Ah. Then um, they give you this cotter pin that, that drops through the hole here to hold the pin on. So it just drops through this hole here so the pin won't come out. And they want you to loop it up and bolt it onto the top here. So they use this, uh, this fine chain so the cotter pin will we'll just go through the end of this chain somehow. And I think it actually will go through here pretty good. that. Okay. So the cotter pin is through there and then they want you to cut it 40 millimeters long. So we'll do that. 40 millimeters right there. And then uh, to the other end, they give you a, a small ring that fits through the end of the chain. Oh my gosh. This will be kind of fun. Not. Yeah, that's not too bad. Squish that back down. OK. 
Okay, and then uh, they use a nut. This is threaded up here. And that threads through here, so that's just going to thread through this ring. And thread into here. Just going to tighten it loosely for now. And then this just goes down and drops through the retaining pin. And there we go. There's our, our tongue jack assembly. So here is one of my painted uh, ramp legs. So the next step is to uh, install the, the deck. There's my deck with the mahogany trim. The first thing we do is we've got these little brass rivets that have to go in. And they have a tapered point and they just tap in place. Pretty straightforward. And they don't actually do anything other than they're just a decoration. So we've got uh, a bunch of those in here and we've got a bunch of them in here. Same thing, they're just a decoration. They do not actually do anything. So I'm going to hammer a bunch of those in, and I'll come back. Now I got all my uh, my rivets in pieces. So these just mount in here, and the instructions they show using double sticky tape. I don't believe that's that's really the best solution. So I'm going to use this E6000 glue that I use quite a bit. Um, it, it's thinner, so that it won't make the the wood stick up anymore. Double sticky tape, you know, would add some thickness to it. So these will just mount in here like this. And I will try to get an equal spacing all the way around. That looks pretty good, so we'll just set that aside to dry and we'll do the other one. Here's my painted deck done in uh, light gun metal. I just, I'm so impressed by this. It's just heavy and really nice. Um, so the, the wood pieces will go in like this. And I'm going to do those last. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use the E6000 and glue them in. This metal strip bolts down here. So I'll actually do that first. Um, well, actually first bolt down piece. But then there's also this little handle right here that goes in the back corner. And it just uses a little tiny washer here. And then a lock nut. I'm assuming this is a lock handle to hold the the loading ramps up. And that just will tighten. Tighten that to make it tight enough so it moves but doesn't flop around. Okay, and then this piece is held on with little tiny bolts and nuts. So I've got these little bolts right here and then little nuts that go underneath. figure out which, which ones it is. Probably these. Oh my gosh, they're small. Yep, that's it. Yeah. And then a little tiny nut. And when I mean tiny, I mean tiny. It's tiny. So I'm gonna go ahead and bolt this down. I don't think I'll I don't think I'll show it on camera because as I've mentioned before in the past, YouTube doesn't like bad words on the videos. And I, I may wind up doing a few of those. I don't know. We'll see how this goes. Maybe it will won't be as bad as I thought. Nut driver is 
not the right size. Maybe a Tamiya nut driver will work better. It's too big, but at least it gets it on there started. Okay. So, I'll go ahead and bolt this strip down, and then we'll continue on with this. You can see I've got the uh, decking mounted down there. And now what I'm going to do is uh, mount the axles. Now, the instructions show mounting the fenders first, but I would rather put the axles on first because when you set it upside down, it'll be sitting on the fenders, and I really don't want to do that. The axles have got a notch here, and they just drop right in. Boy, this stuff is nice. Really a beautiful kit. Um, so the axles just drop in place, and then there's this U-shaped bracket that fits over it. And then some Allen head screws hold it on. So, no rocket science here to put the axle on. I'll go ahead and mount the rest of those and I can flip it back over and work on the fenders. So when I was working on this uh, at the e very end of the day, I decided to go ahead and glue these um, decks down, mainly because they had a little bit of a tiny bit of a bow, and so I wanted to clamp them good and let them dry overnight. I stuck them down with E6000 glue, and uh, so that way there's no, there's no bow in them anymore. This thing is very nice and solid. Um, the axles are in, so now it's time to do the fenders. Now, uh, yeah, let me grab the fenders and we'll take a look at those. So here's our fender, and it comes pre-scored, so you just bend it until those touch. And then this one here is scored on the top, so we bend it up. And then we'll bend these down. Something like that. Now these, of course, have to be flat, so we've got to bend this one a little more. And that looks about right. And then this little bracket mounts inside here. And it uses two of these little hex head bolts. And uh, mounts in like this. It'll stiffen up the, the joint here. I'm so used to screws and Tamiya kits. These little hex head bolts are actually kind of nice. They look great and uh, with the right tools like this driver they're really easy to put in. And there's our fender. So now the fender mounting holes right here and it just bolts on like this. And it uses a a small socket head screw to hold on. So, uh, well, may as well put this one on. Um, put a little bit of Loctite on these. I know there's not any big vibration issues with the trailer, but I still don't like my stuff to fall apart. like this I always put the bolts in not real super tight just kind of get them in there and get the parts lined up and uh, because sometimes it takes a little fiddling to get them into place you can 
see our little bracket here in the middle. And yes, it's going to take a little bit of fiddling because it goes like that. Boy, that really stiffens it up though. Wow. I'm still not a thousand percent sure I'm not going to paint these, but I'll get it all put together and decide. Now, these front ones, uh, you'll notice I didn't put those in because this bracket mounts on top of that and then bolts around the front here. I'll get set up to put that on. Okay, so now it's time to put this bracket in the front and this actually mounts behind behind the front plate. It sits in this little area here and then it's held on with the two bolts that hold the fender on which happen to be these little hex bolts. The fender, at least on mine, has to be shoved up to make it fit. The edges are sharp and there's a bunch of moving pieces in here. So it's kind of a trick to get everything kind of all lined up. But it is possible. And I had put a little tiny bit of Loctite in there before I, before I did this. Again, I'm not attempting to get these super tight, just get them in there. And then on the front, there's a hole here and the bolt goes all the way through the hole. And then this bracket is threaded on the back side. So I don't know if you can see that good, but... Good, nice and solid. Protect the fenders. The fenders are very solid. Uh, okay, so I'll uh, snug those up and then I'll do the other side. Okay, a couple things. First thing is I've decided I really like the unpainted fenders, so I'm going to leave them unpainted. Uh, second thing is uh, now it's time to do the, the tires and wheels. Now, the kit came with bearings. The only thing is I personally don't like these open bearings when they're on the outside of something, so I'm going to replace them with sealed bearings. I'll save those and use them in a, to me, a truck where they are out of the weather. Uh, they're just standard 5x11 bearings, and so no big deal, but I probably will wind up running this in the dirt, and oh yeah, this is going to be kind of a trick. These tires are a tight fit, so what I'll do is put the bearing on first and then put the tire over it slide the other bearing down it came with a lug nut find a nut driver here like that. And then the kit also came with came with these little black caps that press onto the nut to give it a more scale appearance and that hides the nut and the bearing and everything else. That looks pretty good. Go ahead and get the rest of the boy those tires are nice. Big chunky tires. Nice and solid. This will carry a ton of weight. One thing I didn't mention when I was putting the wheels on, I thought I just might show it, is you can see how this doesn't spin. And if I just back off the nut a little bit, I get it to the point where I really like it. Um, 
the front ends of Tamiya trucks are the same. Sometimes if you tighten it down, especially with aluminum wheels, they don't spin right. I've had people ask me, uh, hey, I tightened it up tight and the wheel doesn't spin. Well, okay, it's a lock nut. Back it off a little tiny bit until it spins perfect. And, uh, and that's actually quite normal or common depending on the bearings and the wheels and everything else. So sometimes you may have to do that. There's our, our trailer with the wheels on it. Boy, that, I like the looks of that thing. Time to install the ramp. And no big deal here, except you got to get this tab to the outside. And this pin just runs through. And then it gets a C-clip. Of course, one of the threaded C-clips. Okay, so there's my rear ramps, and these ramps obviously can slide in and out to fit the width of your machine that's driving into it, and then when they fold up and this handle folds down, they just stay in the up position. So there's our back ramps, and those look really good. Now it's time to do the front. Now the front is right here, frame. And it has a short pin that drops through. Okay, there we go. Struck. Problem is everything had to be lined up good on the other end, so those two pins just drop through here and get a dreaded C clip. I might have to come up with a little latch or something to hold that up, but one thing interesting about this trailer is the hitch doesn't doesn't have any weight support at all on it. Um, the trailer, and I, I guess that probably makes sense since there's no suspension, um, the trailer is very stable forward and aft. If this was solid, it would be lifting the tires, and with this loose, the trailer can just follow terrain a little bit by itself. So um, I guess that kind of makes sense for this particular use. I'll go ahead and put these clips on, and we'll see what else is left to do. Next steps are a little tongue jack that we assembled earlier, and there's just threaded bosses in here that it bolts into. So I know you won't be able to see this on the screen, well, let's see. I can move my camera. Yeah. Since I've got those nice ramps that hold the trailer up in place, I can just do it like this, which makes it much easier to hold on to things. And uses the same hex style nuts as everything else. The quality of this is just absolutely superb. I, there's no other way to put it. Beautiful piece. Um, I went and looked. I paid... I can't remember with shipping and everything was under $300, but I went and looked and right now Tucan Hobby has it for $277. That's as I filmed this. Uh, plus shipping. So you're probably in that some $300 range for this trailer. But again, you've got smaller equipment to haul around, like a skid loader. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful trailer. Safety chain out of the way there. Okay. That 
probably will never get used, but it certainly looks good up there. Okay, the final thing is the lights. We'll take a look at those next. So I'm going to take a look at the lights, but before I do that, um, I just was looking at the trailer um, after I finished it last night, and I don't like the aluminum appearance of this uh, of this uh, tongue. Um, I love the fenders. I, I think those look great. But I decided I'm going to go ahead and pop this off and paint it gunmetal like the rest of the trailer. I think that'll give me a, a overall a little more scale look. So I'm going to just take a look at the lights here. They have a, a separate little page of instructions for the lights. And pretty straightforward. There's a, a back plate, there's a lens, and there's these little clear lenses that glue up in the corners of the red. Um, so I will use uh, my micro crystal clear to glue those together. And then they mount on this metal bracket and bolt to the trailer. But one thing I did not know about the <coughs> trailer is it does come with some lights. Take a look at those here. Um, and they're kind of cool. Uh, they've got little tiny surface mount LEDs here. One, two, three, four, five, six on each side. And they're, they're already wired up with long pieces of wire so that you could uh, run them up to, I don't know what. I mean, they, they look like, to me, a MFC plugs. Of course, you know, you're not gonna, you're not gonna run them that way. But the board itself is awesome, and I can tap into these and hook up my own lighting. Now, since this is my own trailer for a custom project that I'm gonna be working on over this entire year, I am going to use these, and I will show how I wire those in a future video. This trailer is going to have a buyer wireless trailer light set up. So that's going to be upcoming. But for now, I just wanted to show them off, show that these little surface mount LEDs are cool. These things mount in here. So, you know, you get these super little bulbs with, um, <laughs> with without having to mount all kinds of stuff in there. So. I will go ahead and glue these lenses together and mount these and paint uh, paint that and then we'll come back and mount these on the trailer. Well there's my little light assembly I'll put together. Uh, notice I did not put the, the little light board inside um, because I am going to do that in a future video. So these just bolt on here with one of these style bolts. on here just for fun. Just put one in there for now just to kind of show you how that looks. Yeah, that looks nice. I like the looks of this trailer. Now, one thing I discovered, <coughs> because I pulled these pins to pull the, uh, the A-frame off the front, and the pin wouldn't come out because the tongue jack was in the way, so I had to take that off. So when I put it back together, I'm going to put the pin from the uh, inside out in case I have to take that off in the future. So it's getting painted right now. I'll get that on there, and then we'll see what this trailer looks like all finished up. One thing I want to mention as I was uh, taking a better look at this instruction sheet, flipped over to the back side, um, LESU makes an EL005 lighting controller that these can plug into and then they plug into the the throttle, the steering and the uh, light outputs on a receiver to operate the uh, the trailer lighting. So if you were going to use um, you could you could run these through a plug and plug into your truck uh, if you were just using a standard radio and those would give you outputs or you could add a second receiver to the trailer and get lights that way. So that's something that's available. It doesn't come as part of the trailer, but it is available. Okay, there's our finished product. You can see I painted this uh, frame in the front. I still haven't figured out a, a clip to hold that up, but I'll work on that later and show it in a future video. So, um, trailer looks really good. I love the look of this thing. Uh, it's beefy as heck. I mean, it would carry a ton of weight. 
um, although it's designed for a loader. Uh, the, the ramps flip down easily and they adjust for width for different width of vehicles. Um, so, you know, nice loading and unloading. I've got a, uh, let's see here, I've got a Diecast Masters um, skid steer, which you can see the ramps fit that fine. It sits up on the trailer fine. Now, of course, I am uh, going to do the LESU hydraulic loader, and that'll be a future video. So, so really, you'll be seeing this kind of stuff off and on throughout the year. Um, the trailer was just the first part because it was easy to do. And, uh, and I wanted to get it done. Yeah, the trailer looks really good. I like it. So, uh, as I promised also, I have a little sneak peek on what I'm going to build to tow the trailer. So I've been wanting to do the truck for myself for a long time. Uh, something to maybe take some shows. And just a little sneak peek. I always put, you know, the parts I'm saving in a cardboard box. But there's a sneak peek. Okay, as you can see, that's a, a 3D printed Mac body. So I'm going to make a Mac uh, day cab truck with every bell and whistle I could possibly think of, which I can think of a lot. So that's going to be coming up in a future video. But today, it's all about the trailer. So there you go. Uh, thanks for watching. Give this video a thumbs up. That really helps with the uh, YouTube ranking. Subscribe to the channel. And uh, we'll see you next time.